Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a special edition here on the NDB Media Channel, Trekking Across the Universe. It's 11 a.m. on the East Coast, uh, West Coast. Oh, my God, I was going to say it. I, I flubbed it. All right, we're here. It's awesome. It is a wonderful Friday. Today is March 10th, 2023. We have already quite a few people in the chat room. Folks, we're going to get to your comments. I'm not going to do this for very long. I just, we want to get to our guest. If there is a friend to fandom, to the community, it, we have him on with us right now. But you know who I am. I'm going to stop talking. Michael, get us going, buddy. Yeah. Uh, we would love to welcome Dean Devlin here to talk about several things. His new series, The Ark on Sci-Fi Channel, Wednesday evenings. Um, and... That's the main thing, but we're going to be talking about some of his other shows, too. So, Dean, um, it's it's yours. Well, thank you. It's nice to see you guys again. It is a pleasure, Dean. It is uh, it is very exciting for us. If we do, even though we were pretty casual and cool prior to going live, if there's a little bit of hero worship. We're sorry, man. We love what you do. <laughs> so, there might well, be a I'll little bit of that. I'll try not to hero worship you too much, and then we'll avoid that. All right, fair enough. We have quite a few comments in the chat room. I want to give a shout out to Quarter Cat, uh, Films and Fandoms with Kaylee, Elizabeth Coopers, Regina Mills, uh, Jem Ondo. So we're going to go to your comments. If you have any questions at any time, go ahead and write it off in the chat room. We're going to show it up on screen. But uh, we're really here to talk about a program which I want to obviously thank dean but first i want to thank michael because he said dude you got to watch this program the ark i'm like oh come on i i'm tired with the religious spiritual aspect i don't want to do any of that stuff but michael said hey idiot you need to pay attention <laughs> and by the way we have a guest upcoming and i was like all right all right i, I better watch wow the ark on sci-fi dean really good stuff man uh wow i'm so happy that michael did tell me about it I thank you for that. Um, good stuff. Uh, how long thank ago? You. How long ago did you come up with this idea to get it on air? Well, you know, it's, it's funny because um, uh, uh, quite a few years ago, I was doing a TV show called uh, The Librarians. And when that show got canceled, I was getting a lot of heat from my own agents and from executives saying that I was too old fashioned, that I put too much comedy in my shows and that my shows were too too lighthearted and fun and that television had become dark and edgy and serialized. So I wanted to show that I could I could do dark and edgy and serialized. So I wrote this pilot for The Ark and it kind of just sat on my desk because before I could even take it out, suddenly I was doing Almost Paradise and then Leverage Redemption and all this other stuff. So finally, after those shows were launched and doing well, I said, all right, it's time to finally put The Ark out there. And we sent it out in the first people to respond was the sci-fi channel which was kind of the place i was hoping we could do it and they called me up and they said look we really love this pilot we really love this show but could this be more like your other shows oh wow <laughs> more like like the other and i was like absolutely that's what i love to do so then i rewrote the pilot and made it more in the style of what i do best and uh, uh then jonathan glasner came on board and uh, we got to do this really fun very retro kind of sci-fi spaceship show and we've been having a ball you know dean i got that i didn't talk to michael about it so it is deliberate when you when the arc itself is shown on screen you guys did something different something special to it it has an odd feeling it's almost like maybe well correct me if i'm uh, i'm sure i'm wrong but it is almost cartoonish where it has quick movements to it I don't know. Was that a deliberate decision on your part or am I just seeing things? Well, I, I would say it slightly differently. I think that the thing is we're building upon the kind of science fiction shows that made both Jonathan Glasner and I want to do this. So all of the looks of this, the feeling of it, it's inspired by the shows that, that got us hooked. Um, as I said, you know, the original version was going to be the super dark and edgy thing and try to be uberly grounded. But once, once they took the handcuffs off and said, you don't have to do that, we really got to do this more as a love letter to the kind of shows that, that made us want to write this stuff, that made us want to be in the business in the first place. So it's, it's heavily influenced by things we've seen. Now, our kind of 
imagined future that this takes place in, I think that's very different from the other sci-fi shows that we've seen. Um, and, and, and it, it um, informs a lot of the decisions that we made in, in how the, how the show looks, how the shows run, uh, uh, you know, who's in charge, what the hierarchy is like. And that's that kind of background of what was going on on earth in the last hundred years, that only gets kind of doled out very slowly over the course of the season and into next season. Um, so, so I think as people get more informed about how the world got to the point that these ships got lost, the more they'll understand the look of it, the feel of it, the decisions of it and who these people are. Hmm. Michael, did you hear that? How yes. these ships got lost. Well, have you seen? <laughs> there have may you be seen, something in there because we're you only seen on the, episode five. <laughs> have, have you have you seen Wednesday's episode yet? No, I have not. <laughs> you I need to. Okay. Yes, I'm actually running behind. Unfortunately, it might be that <laughs> seasonal time of year. But I have seen. Wait a minute. No, um, actually, I don't think I've seen episode six, the one that just aired. Yeah, that's the one I'm talking about. Okay, episode six. I have seen episode five. So You're in for I, a fun ending on that one. Oh yes, you are, Roger. Okay. If every anybody has not seen it, it's a fun ending. Just like episode five had a fun ending, as far as I was concerned. Wow. <laughs> and a little All surprise. Right. So yeah, there we go. Look, folks, it's on. We are going to have a few spoilers, but we don't want obviously we don't want to give everything away because we want to white we want to invite everyone to watch the program. But before I get to some of the comments, I do want to give a shout out and a hit and a half. Dylan Gay Gayothra. Sorry about that. We got a like. Thank you. That's our first like for the episode. And uh, we're going to get to it. Uh, I want to back up to one of the episodes when I was making, well, not a joke, but when I said about the hero worship, this one was funny. Hero worship is saying it mildly for me. <laughs> I like that one. That, that one's real. Uh, film and fandoms with Kaylee. Loving the arc. And as I said, folks, we're going to get to some of the comments. Dean, please correct me if it was episode three or four. This is, I think, one of the heavier episodes where you're dealing with everyone being infected with that substance. Yeah. What a wonderful, uh, not, I don't want to say a wonderful ending, but you got me on that episode. You had me at the water. <laughs> it was, it was wonderful. The concept of the engineer saying, no, I don't want to forget. Yeah, that was good stuff. That's good story. I mean, it all is Dean, but I want to focus on that real quick. That was good storytelling, man. Well, thanks. I mean, I, I, I look. There are other sci-fi spaceship shows that have literally ten times the budget that we have, and they have all kinds of laser battles and aliens attacking and all kinds of fun stuff like that. Our show is really about the characters. You know, our show is really about who are these people who were put into this uh, pressure cooker and forced to deal with issues that they thought they weren't going to have to for many, many years. And, you know, I, I always think about how many dumb mistakes I made when I was under pressure before I could handle pressure. And this whole ship is filled with people like that. Yeah. So it, it really is about the characters and what they're going through and how they handle it. Um, so I, I'm super glad that that's a moment that, that, that worked for you because that's really the heart of our whole show. Um, before I hand off a question to Michael, because Michael needs to jump in, another thing that I'm appreciating, which actually frustrated me, maybe being an older guy, an adult, is that dynamic that you're talking about that these, I'm going to say kids, for lack of a better word, Absolutely. but these kids, they're younger. They don't know. And the, what you just explained is it adds emphasis. I was, I was like, oh, come on. How can they be so, you know, this way, this, but then it, it dawned on me. They're not military. They were the understudies. So I got past that quick when I realized, and it's good stuff. And another thing that you have in the episode is very slightly done, is that you introduced us to their, I guess, the not the understudies, but the, the ones that were supposed to be in charge, the ones that died, and you've kept them on the series. I thought you killed them off and you were done with them. <laughs> It was, that's, that's a good narrative, uh, not a story arc, but I guess the narrative, right, that you're keeping these characters. Are we going to see more of them, if you could reveal that moving forward? Um, we use flashbacks to kind of round out the storytelling, but I, I, I don't see us being a show like Lost, where there's as much story going on in the past as in the present. 
our, our show really is about these people and being on that ship with them. But occasionally we have to kind of flash back and 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 give some more information that we can't uh, do immediately. Wow, I like that. I appreciate that. Um, Michael, go ahead. Um, I still have some other questions, so we'll we're gonna trade off. But like I say, I try to have it as a conversation. We do have uh, Elizabeth Cooper. Uh, hero worship maven you can feel <laughs> dean's touch in everything he does his work has a very distinctive feel yeah definitely uh Char charlene burns says i love the arc reminds me of your stargate days <laughs> all right i like that i uh, think i think that comment about a distinctive feel was a uh, a reference to uh, one of my characters on uh, leverage <laughs> Okay, I like that one. Let me know if I'm right about that in the comments. <laughs> yes, please, Elizabeth. Uh, Barney White says Dean is a hero from a from writing sci-fi class like Universal Soldier to the arc. He does not disappoint. Uh, young man, you. I'm going to call you still young man because you are young <laughs> at heart for what you do. And uh, I still, you blew me away with the Patriot, but Independence Day, 1996. I am going to go back to that. Not right sure. now. I am still eternally grateful, Dean. What a blockbuster summer event that was. I know a lot of these kids in the chat room are like, huh, what? But <laughs> Independence Day. Uh, I asked you then. I'm going to ask you again when you talked about the speech. But we'll get to that later. We're, we're talking about the R, a little bit of Warehouse 13, Leverage Redemption, and Almost Paradise. But Patrick says, I personally would love to add a model of the spacecraft to my collection. Arc. Okay. We got to get on that. Yeah, for sure. Oh, so also, you don't have one available yet, huh? Not yet. No. The more but that is we, a wonderful... Oh, I'm sorry, Dean. The, the more love we get, the more opportunity we'll have to create uh, merch. <laughs> ah, well, there yes. you go. Barney says, TV is derivative, but I still feel like the arc is both unique and has something new to say. Love it. Yeah, I do too. It was a pleasant surprise. But when Michael told me it was Dean Devlin, I'm like, oh, I'm in. I'm in. Mike knows. I'm like, okay, I'll get around to watching it. So uh, I'm... I'm so glad you dig it. Oh, hell yeah. And we've been talking about it for a while. As a matter of fact, our guest that was on last week, oh, man, great, humbling, wonderful casting choice. Um, who came up with the line? Um, oh, my God. Papa... Uh, Papa... Oh, he's talking to the plants. Oh, and I think he calls himself Papa... Oh, my... <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it was either Glassner or the writer of that particular episode. They have a lot of fun with him. You know, he he was originally, in, in my pilot script, conceived very differently. I, I, had, I, had, I had written him as, 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 as very short and overweight and, uh, uh, and kind of with a chip on his shoulder. Um, but as we were meeting actors, we met Ryan, and I said, I'm going to rewrite the entire part for him. I love this kid. I really? think he's awesome. And uh, yeah, then it all became about Ryan. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, he he was a great. If, if people haven't seen it, we did have him as a guest last week, last Friday. And if you're on um, the YouTube channel, you can see it there. I mean, it was a great interview. And I was going to ask a few questions a I asked him, yeah, um, sure. which shocked me. And Roger says, oh, I figured that out immediately. But I didn't for some reason. Um, we were, I was talking about his um, set you know, with, with all the plants and the, you know, the dome. And I thought that was green screen. I thought it was a very good green screen. He said, like, oh no, that was not green screen. That was a real set, the whole thing. And I went, how big is the? <laughs> well, the thing is, uh, it, it's a very big set. Um, but the problem is we needed these plants to keep growing over the course of the season. Mm. So we oh. couldn't build it in a soundstage because the plants would die. So that set oh. was actually built outside. And oh, the whole covering had to come off every single time we were done shooting so that the sun could, could come in and so this wow. is a huge set. It has this this covering, but at, at the end of every shoot day, we have to take the cover off so that the plants can grow. Oh my goodness. And it's still there. Wow, that is cool. Folks, I want to interrupt everyone in the chat room. We have quite a few people watching us. We have another like. Thank you from Aisha Kerr across the pond. Thank you, Aisha, from the United Kingdom. Folks, That's everyone sweet. in the chat room, 
let us know where you're from, where you're watching right now. If you don't want to get in trouble with your employer, that's fine. But just let us know either the city or the state. I'd love to know where you guys are at right now. I want to welcome Lisa Thompson, of course, Patrick Carson, Barney White, I think I already mentioned, and uh, Marsha Middleton. We have quite a few. We're going to get to those right now. But Charlene says, I love that there's always a problem that they really can't control. It's very elemental. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Elizabeth says, hi, Tiff. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> They're greeting each other in the chat room. Greetings all. Uh, Tiffany says, you're doing a great job. Yep, that's why we're here. Only the best character of all time. Hmm. You know, in, in very early on, we were asked... Um, by sci-fi who who is the villain of the show and we said it's space he says space is constantly trying to kill you space doesn't want you there yeah so you know all these things that come up in not every episode but nearly every episode it's it's the problems of trying to do space travel especially when spaceships are built by billionaires and not by countries with regulations and standards <laughs> I like that. Uh, Dean, forgive me a moment. Tiffany is Mississippi. We have Sacramento, California. Elizabeth, we have... Okay, thank you. Yeah, Art family loves you, Dean. <laughs> the Utah Film Festival. Yes. Thank you for joining us, Utah. Utah. Uh, I believe uh, there it is. Jam Scotland. Ondo, Scotland. Oh, so Jam, how, what do you think about uh, Bryce? Our, our oh, yes. Show. <laughs> Jam, please, your comments on that. Uh, Marsha's from sunny Florida. Uh, Pittsburgh, baby. Nice. <laughs> Lisa nice. is the UK. Uh, quarter cat, Dallas, Texas. This there is cool, go. folks. This is all really over. Neat. Regina, what time is it over there? So <laughs> that is cool. And I, I know we had someone else jump in. Folks, I, I do apologize. Uh, oh, oh, there's a comment. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad you like him. <laughs> That is cool. Isabel, thank you for joining us from Connecticut. Uh, there it is. Arnold, Missouri. And uh, does a great job playing a Scotsman. Okay, Regina, it's 8 p.m. over there. Thank you. And Susie, thank you. Bat Rouge. Excellent. We love Louisiana. Tiffany <laughs> says space needs Dean. <laughs> There's a lot there. Hopefully we'll be able to get through that. But the arc is going to go, I understand, 12 episodes, right? Correct. So we're halfway through right now. Yeah. Um, is there anything that you could tease us about without making it obvious? I'm sure you can, sir. <laughs> You're right. Either. Well, well, you won't, you won't get this because you haven't seen the newest episode. But what, happens at, what happened at the end of the most recent episode dramatically changes the course of our season. Okay. I bet it does. Yeah. Yeah. So we go right. a very different direction than what everyone thought. After starting this, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of hesitant on being a spoiler myself, just because <laughs> I don't want to spoil it for someone else. Because enjoying the moments, enjoying the scenes, is what makes this movie going or television going experience the best thing. I hate spoiling it. Uh, Susie already says, "Yes, it did." So Susie's <laughs> already beating me to the punch. Going back to Marsha. Will the crew get off the ark on a terra firma for a little while? Um, you'll have to wait and see. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was not a no. So, uh, that's Ryan good to know. did that a lot to me, too. Which one? I said Ryan did that to me a lot, oh, too. He last did. Week. Ryan was cool, though. That little guy could tease. <laughs> and I didn't mean little guy, folks. I didn't mean that anyway, whatsoever. <laughs> He's a young man compared to Michael and myself. And this is his first show. I mean, I know that, that, that shocked me. And he's yes. so terrific. He works so hard. He's so dedicated. He's just a great kid. I, I was asking because we interviewed him last week on Friday. It was noon for us. It was 7, 8 p.m. Like, dude, you're 24. What <laughs> the hell are you talking to a bunch of old dudes for on a <laughs> Friday night? Uh, he was funny. His answer was worth it, folks, if you want to go back and check it out. Barney White says Nebraska. Utah Film Festival says, really enjoying Stacey Reed in the series. Yes. Uh, She's very Tiffany special. Wild, I will tell you. And then Tiffany was sick of the critics. Mm. <laughs> okay. All right. I hear you. Um, the dynamic between them is really, really good. 
Uh, it's fun. Like I said, once I was able to get over those, what I thought were like, oh, come on, be adults. It's like, it was a precious situation. It was really good. Um, another aspect that I like, in addition to you bringing the characters back, which advanced the narrative. Like I said, I thought they were dead, man. You weren't going to go back to them. So that, that was cool. I like that aspect of it. And the ship, um, are we going to see a lot more of the ship that we don't know of yet? Or There will be parts of the ship that uh, that will be discovered. Uh, okay. But for the most part, you know, the, it, this is all they've got. This is all yeah. they have, you know. So uh, some of the spaces are quite large to give a, you know, a little bit more less uh, uh, claustrophobic space like the observation deck um, or the uh, where the food is being grown. But other parts of it is really quite small and, and, and intense. So uh, they're stuck there. They can't they can't go anywhere. So uh, uh, it's again, that's why the focus is more about the characters than the environment. Wow. Yeah, I like that. I, I appreciate all the comments, folks. Marcia says, what can you tell us about your coming appearance with the ARC at WonderCon later this month? Um, I'm, I'm excited to be doing it. I, I, I haven't done the Anaheim WonderCon in a few years. I think the last time was for the librarians. <clears throat> and uh, you're real excited to be there. It, it's going to be on a Saturday. I think it's fairly early. Let me see what date. What, what's the did, date? Did this? you say, Dean, Anaheim? Yeah. Anaheim, California. Oh, wow. That's just, yeah. It'll be that's... Saturday the 25th. And I think I think the I think the panel starts at ten thirty, but I'm not a hundred percent sure of that. That's the twenty fifth of March, right? Yeah. So Damn. if you're around, come on down. It should be a fun panel. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna if I have to push some clients aside, I'm gonna have to try to push some clients aside. And that I think is we'll be, cool. And I think we'll be screening some advanced stuff that. Uh, uh, oh wow! Well, oh, there he's is. there then. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Susie now wants to know since Marsha broached this subject, are you going to schedule any cons? And I imagine she's referring to ARC cons. Um, you know, again, we'll have to kind of see what goes forward. You know, I mean, uh, uh, we we were at the um, uh, fan con in Louisiana uh, not that long ago. We're doing this one. Um, you know, I'd, I'd like to do more, uh, but it's really going to depend on on how well the show is received and uh, um, and, and our schedule, you know, we're, we, we've got three television series we're doing right now and it's, yeah. it's, it's on, on three different continents and three different time zones. So it's, oh my it's, goodness. it's, it's pretty, it's pretty all encompassing for us, but, uh, anytime we can be out there with the fans, anytime we can get to the convention, we always love doing it. You know, I think I told you on that the last time you and I talked, you know, when, when I did the movie Stargate, I literally spent six months going to every single convention across the United States. Yes. And uh, I think the result was Stargate ended up being a real surprise hit because, you know, the, the, the fans who go to these conventions, they're unlike normal fans. They when they when they when they don't like something, they're very loud about not liking it. But when they do like something, they're incredibly loyal. They're incredibly uh, uh, they take an ownership to the shows and, and they really are like worker bees that go out there to try to get other people to understand why they like it and why they should watch it. Yeah, I, I believe that. Uh, Regina says, how did you like Berlin? How were the reactions of you being there, hated not being able to be there? Well, it, it was fantastic. Uh, uh, you know, the Berlin Festival Film Festival is always about feature films, and only in the last few years have they started to open it up to television. But this was the first year that they included television as part of the screening uh, of, uh, uh, part of the festival, and they only allowed eight shows, eight TV series, and ours was the first one picked. So it was a real wow. honor. Wow. We were promoted everywhere. But I have to tell you, you know, I, I'm half Jewish and, I, and and we landed in in in, in Berlin. Oh and I'm, being, <laughs> and I'm being driven to the air to, to the hotel and all of a sudden I see these enormous Nazi flags flying. And I'm like, what the hell? Turned out they were shooting a movie. <laughs> yeah, wow. But it kind of freaked me out. <laughs> yeah, that would not be. Yeah, I, I, I could see that. Jeez. I had a book, The Story of the Third Reich or whatever, and I have a friend who is full. Uh, and he walks into my office and says, What the hell is that doing there? And I look up and like, Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's a historical book. But it had the, you know, the dumb swastika on there. So I had to remove it. I guess it wasn't apropos to have <laughs> one in my office sitting right behind me as I'm doing taxes. Go figure. 
Yeah, uh, Harry a, Binks. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's a, that's a little distracting, I think. Yeah, and it was behind me too. It wasn't behind them. It was behind me. So that wasn't one of our smarter moments. Harry, thank you for joining us. You were on last week's episode, so uh, we'll get to that. I want to give some shout outs. Michael Bednar, thank you for the like. Harry Binks, thank you for the like, folks. We're hurting for for likes and stuff. Please give us some follows. Michael and I, we're the grandpas doing this. We we're insecure, <laughs> yeah, so we love the likes, folks, uh, and we uh, do appreciate this. Now on the arc, uh, I I don't know if you mentioned early on, but you don't have news yet. I know we're already jumping ahead, but uh, no news yet, right on uh, a second season. But sci-fi, not ripping sci-fi. They take a while to make a decision, right? They do. Well, you know, again, I, the, the last thing I did for them was a mini series uh, called The Triangle, and that, that was quite a few years ago. I think almost eight years ago. Um, so I've never done a series with them, so I don't know. But uh, you know, we 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 had an enormous opening with the premiere. It was the highest rated premiere they've had in over two years. Um, uh, I think I, I, we we ended up losing about half the audience into second week. I, I think half the people fell in love with the show and half said, this not for me. But each week we've been gaining them back. And now we're back up to the big numbers we had in the beginning. So it, it, it's feeling very good. The community is, is growing. You know, look, the kind of stuff I do is not for everybody. But if you get the joke, if you get what we're doing, people seem to get very passionate about it. And it seems like that audience keeps growing every single week. Yeah, well, when I spoke to you some 10 years ago, I, I did comment, and it was probably rude and ignorant on my part when I said, look at the movies you've done. They're fun. They're exciting. Then you blew us all away when you did The Patriot. It's like, wait a minute. It, it, it doesn't equate, you know, but it was well done. And it's, it's the same talent, man. It's exciting stuff. You can do it. But these are the types of things that you like to do. Not that you don't like doing The Patriot. It's That's just, right. yeah, and it's it's good stuff. Uh, Independence Day, like I said, is still one of my one of my favorite moments. And for everyone here, I'm going to repeat the same question: When it came to the speech, Dean, how long? Did, I know you probably get asked this all the time, and I'm sorry. How long did it take you to actually write it, and then finally what we saw on screen? So I'm talking it, about President Whitmore's speech. This is the absolute truth. Yeah, about that. So what happened is. The way Roland and I used to work in those days is I would write and he would draw. And so he would draw the scene that we talked about. I would write the scene. When I was done writing it, I would show it to him. And if he liked it better than what he drew, he'd redo the drawings. And if I liked the drawings better than what I would wrote, then I would rewrite what I wrote. That was kind of the way we worked in those days. Yeah. Um, but then we got to the moment of the speech. And I said to Roland, I said, I said, this moment is like really important to the movie because this is this is basically the St. Crispin's Day speech from Henry IV. This is this is the king saying, I'm going to ride into battle with you, right? And Roland rolled his eyes and said, Oh, we only have to write a speech as good as the St. Crispin's Day speech, <laughs> one of the most famous speeches ever. And I said, I said, Well, look, this is gonna take a lot of time and a lot of energy. I said, let me just put a little placeholder in for the speech now. And then when we're done with the script, we'll like focus on it and we'll just work on the speech. He goes, great. So I went in the other room and in about five minutes, I wrote this little placeholder and I put it in the script. Anyway, time goes on. We write the script. It sells very quickly. We're raced into production. And I'm literally sitting in um, my hotel room when I realized, oh my God, they're shooting the speech today. We never rewrote the speech. Oh. So racing to the set to go work on the speech. And I get to this, I get to the set and Bill Pullman is there and all the extras there and he does a rehearsal of it and the place went wild. And I went, I guess it's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> and we know the only thing we did is 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 we added today we celebrate our independence day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh do people still talk to you about that? Or is it just we older folk? Because that obviously, as you said, it was a major moment in the movie and it really brought it together, Dean. Well, you know, it's one of these things where almost every year around Independence Day, oh. pe people will go do the speech, record themselves and put it on YouTube. And there, there was this one guy last year who, who literally ran into every Starbucks and started saying it to people. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then there's people who, you know, who cosplay the whole thing and, and kind of recreate it. So, yeah, I mean, if you go on YouTube and, and 
and and and type in the president's speech, you'll see a lot of fans doing their own version of it. And I always get a kick out of that. Uh, on a related to that, I believe it was in 2021 when Bud Weiser did yeah. the incredible homage. I still play that one. That one may have brought a tear to my eye. I know it's just a commercial. <laughs> Were you involved in that one? I don't know anymore. No, I was surprised by it. I was, I was so, when I saw it, I was so thrilled. Yeah? It, yeah it, it, did it give you the chills? Surprise. I had no idea it was coming. <laughs> wow. Yeah, none of us did. It was really good stuff. But I'm sorry for the sidetrack. Michael, if you want to jump in. If not, I want to get back to the arc so we can talk. About okay, well, let me, let me go. With, there's been some yes. questions about, um, let me see. Yeah. Um, oh, I, 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 about that this you talked about librarians i remember when it was canceled i really enjoyed librarians Thank mainly you. because i was a librarian so oh really I, I worked at worked in an elementary school for 30 years in the library so when that I, came out it was kind of like oh i can relate to this <laughs> I, you know it was a long gestating uh, uh, desire of mine to show that librarians are secret superheroes yes which is good i'm so glad you did that um, and then, and then someone was asking, is there going to, uh, leverage redemption? I love leverage. I've only seen the first season of redemption. Oh, yes, someone the second. well, yeah, someone yeah. told me, they said, well, you know, the second season's out there. I said, it is, I missed it. And, but, but, um, is there going to be a third or, or don't you know about that one either? We're waiting to hear on a pickup, but you know, we, we're pretty much the number one show on the platform. So I, I, I'm very optimistic that we're, we're going to get picked up and do one more yeah because yeah, that's on freebie right correct yes that's what i thought yeah uh utah film festival says if i was a betting man i'd expect to see new seasons of leverage the art and almost paradise all three very enjoyable series well we finished shooting the second season of almost paradise and and that will start airing on freebie at some point this summer so so you are right there will be another season <laughs> charlene says i was sad when the outpost ended I was really uh, was hooked too. into that story. I look forward to it every week, just like the arc. Same thing with Leverage and Almost Paradise. I yeah, the Outpost was a was a real surprise. Uh, I mean, it, it that was a show that that people who don't normally like a sword and sandals kind of fantasy show loved the Outpost. I mean, I was so I was always surprised by the people who would tell me how much they loved the show. Uh, we loved making it. Uh, there was a moment where I thought we were going to be able to bring it back. Um, but you know, you know me, I, I never give up on a show. <laughs> I never give up on a show. So, uh, I may not, it may not be imminent, but, uh, uh, I have not given up. I'm, I'm still hoping that there's, there's more of that story to tell. Oh, I hope so. I've been trying to get some of the actors from that on our show, but they've all been too busy and I go, <laughs> yeah. well, some of them are on the arc. <laughs> yeah. I noticed that. Yeah. And I've been trying to get them to come over, but. I mean, you you get busy actors. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you know, and, and sometimes on these shows they get discovered. Um, yes. And and then you know, then, then then it's hard to get them back. I mean, Aldous Hodge right now, who played Hardison on Leverage, you know, I, I cast him on his twenty first birthday in the original Leverage, and now he's a DC superhero. I mean, the guy the guy works more than James Brown. I mean, he's, mm -hmm. he is the hardest working man in show business now. Oh, wow. Okay. There's a comment about to get to. Obviously, thank you for sharing your work. And then look at that one. Barney, Dean knocked out that Independence Day speech so far out of the park, it should have had an in-flight meal. <laughs> that was good, Barney. I like that one. That's a great line. Hell yeah. I think, I'm sorry, Barney. I think we're going to keep that one for a little while. <laughs> Uh, Charlene says, I love the librarians, even when it was just uh, the movies, when it became a series, I was in heaven. Uh, Marsh says you create. Yes, I did miss that earlier. You created the first website for a movie for Stargate. How did that happen? Well, as I was saying to you earlier, um, on Stargate, I, I spent six months going to every convention that, that we could do. Um, I was very nervous about the marketing of the movie because MGM really only was putting it on because they had a hold in their schedule. I mean, they didn't make the film. I made the film independently. And they were just putting it on to fill a hole in the schedule. So I, I didn't believe that they were going to get behind it. Um, but I also had no control. So I said to them at the time, I said, can I have the sci-fi conventions and the internet? And they said, yeah, do whatever you want at the sci-fi conventions. And uh, what's the internet? Really? 
Oh, this yeah. was 94. Oh, that, that, yeah, it would make they sense then. Know. Yeah. Yeah. So we, uh, we created, there'd been fan movie websites. Fans had created websites for movies, but there'd never been an official movie website. So we hired these guys and, and we built the first movie website for Stargate. Um, uh, uh, now, now, uh, um, the, the, the people who, who actually worked on that later made a film of their own called The Blair Witch Project. Hmm. Wow. Go figure. I did not know that connection. You know, it's interesting, Dean, that you tell us that. Um, I've read somewhere, and of course, if it's on the internet, it must be true. It has to be. <laughs> uh, I read somewhere that Star Trek Generations, the movie website, was the first one I guess sanctioned by a studio where the studio did it. I think that's their claim. We're the first one, as opposed to maybe you who actually did the first website for a movie, which I think is really creative how they have framed that. And I think they do that because of, you know, it being the case, whereas you were the producer, the creator. Do you like that, Dean? Creator. Yeah. You like that? <laughs> Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm probably going to be using that one a while. Look, folks, when I first came onto the program, just before we went live, I was shocked that I said, oh, hey, Dean. And I was like, oh, uh, I mean, Mr. Devlin, uh, <laughs> I, I, I had forgotten about that. And we have quite a few. It is in my so contract and it's Sir Devlin. No. <laughs> oh, Sir Devlin. I, sorry, sir. Yes, um, that, that should be easy. Uh, I have more comments here. There are quite a few. Uh, of course, Charlene says uh, ditto to the Tiffany comment. Thanks for giving Christian Kane much acting. <laughs> uh, Susie says, Electro TV is cutting edge. Yeah, it's the beginning of something future generations will follow. Ooh, like that one? I, Thank I, you I, very I, much. We, we uh, love everybody who's watching Electric now. If you don't have the app, download it right away. <laughs> all right, we're going to have to do that right now, folks. Folks, likes, please. We love it on Facebook, YouTube, whatever. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Roger is very insecure. And so, uh, and uh, Dean's Electric Entertainment webpage link is is scrolling on the bottom. So you can go there and you can get some other stuff there too. So as a matter of fact, if you're there and if there's a way to contact him, let him know that you saw this program in here. And of course, they're gonna flood you with email. Sorry, Dean. Please Hopefully. do. Uh that yeah. Now, folks, I, I do want to say this. Uh Obviously, I mentioned that Dean was on with us uh, 10 years ago, uh, but I've noticed that Dean does spend quite a bit of time with the fandom. As a fan, I have to tell you, Dean, I, I thank you. You are giving your time to us by spending it here with us today. You did it on that Friday night some 10 years ago. You do it quite often. And Dean, as a fan, I'm eternally grateful because... You come and talk to us, man. You come and spend time with us, which is absolutely awesome. A lot of people don't do that. And I, I genuinely thank you. And I think everyone else in the chat room is also going to say well, that. Well, look, I mean, I am a fan. You know, I mean, I, 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 remember, I remember dressing up in a robot costume at a Star Trek convention back in, you know, the 80s. So, you know, I, I, I've always been a big fan of this stuff. And, and I think... <laughs> The best compliment I ever got, I don't know if I told you this the last time I was on, the best compliment I ever received in my career was after I had done Independence Day, I was signing at the um, at Comic-Con in San Diego. And there was a long line of people who wanted autographs on posters and things. And there was some 13 year old kid who'd been waiting, I don't know how long to see me. And he got up to the table and I started signing his poster and he just looked at me and he couldn't really articulate what he wanted to say, but he went, you, 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 you get it. And I looked at him and I went, I know exactly what you mean. Because some people, they get it and some people don't. The people who go to these conventions, they get it. The people who don't understand why people go to conventions, they don't get it. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, if, if you're part of that fan community, if you understand the fan community, if, if 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 you are fans of other shows, there is a there's a kind of an understanding of a certain type of entertainment where it's valued in a way that's different than art house stuff and stuff that wins Oscars and things like that. It there there is, you know, there's a tendency in our society to look down on escapist entertainment. You know that we're we're the hot dog compared to the steaks. 
Mm. But, you know, when the world goes through what we've gone through in the last few years, you suddenly start to realize that there's a real value in escapist entertainment. Sometimes we need to escape, even if it's only for an hour a week. Yeah. I always appreciated your movies. I genuinely, you know, uh, Mr. Devlin, when I'm watching a movie, I get caught up in the runtime. I get caught up in some stuff, whether it's just the music <laughs> or whatever. But I remember an Independence Day, and I'm sorry for keep going back to it, but I did escape for two and a half hours. When, when they tell President Whitmore, we want you to die. <laughs> and the theater, uh, we're effed. And it was, we're <laughs> effed. I was part of that. I was caught up in that. And, you know, it's capped off, maybe not directly or indirectly, but in the, worlds of my, in the words of my generation, you know, it was one of the greater comeback lines. Uh, well, you know, in, in, in those days, a movie did not open worldwide on the same day. That actually happened years later because of piracy, that they had to. But back then, a movie would open on whatever was the best day in that particular country. So when Independence Day opened around the world, it took almost four months because each country had a different best day. Yeah. And I spent those four months with the director, Roland Emmerich, and with Will Smith. And we toured the world, going to every single country for every single opening for four months. Oh, wow. wow. And I'll tell you, it was a life-changing thing for me because we would go into theaters in countries that feel very different culturally, very different religiously, politically. And yet, during the movie, they laughed in the same places, they got scared in the same places, they went oh, in the same places. And at the end of that four months, I felt closer to mankind than I ever had in my life, because I realized we have a lot of artifice that separates us. We have a lot of things that divide us. But at the end of the day, mankind, humankind, we're the same everywhere, all over the world. Sir, well said. Dare I say, if I even have the privilege of saying that, <laughs> uh, I, I get it. I love that there's so many scenes in the movie that is absolutely awesome. I'm sure everyone here has seen it. If you haven't, what the hell are you doing, people? <laughs> now there is quite a bit of commentary going on. You can about skip me. the. You can skip skip the sequel. Skip that. Uh, one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Film and fandom says, "Well said." Now this is part of the conversation that was going on. Uh, you are steak. <laughs> now, it's, it's yeah, it, it, it's good stuff. Uh, Maureen says, "Because good versus evil is universal, but good always wins." Uh, the I'm scene in the movie is where the general says, all right, get the word out. We know how to bring them down. And then you switch to the different views around the world where they've been brought down. It's really good stuff. It was where he says, where the world speaks with one voice, we will not go quietly into the... Yeah, I'm not going to repeat it. <laughs> uh, it's really well done. So in the arc, we have... Three people, or three people that are in command. Two are fighting for it. Based on episode five, we had the ending. If I hope people know what happened at the end of episode five. Do we have from this point forward a solid command structure, or are they still going to be at each other's throats? And I guess the two primary, because the third one is like, eh, I'm just here, because he is the navigator after all. Well, I think again. Uh... You have three people who each bring a very specific and very needed set of skills. Um, none of them were really ready for command. They are now in a position where there's no choice. They have to be in command. Their world outlook will always be a conflict. Now, some, some of this has been personal and ego, but some of it is simply how you view the world. Do you view the world as Lane does, as its survival of the fittest? Or do you view the world more as uh, um, Garnett does, which is we're all in it together? 
So, you know, if you have these different worldviews, the, the way in which your decision making uh, uh, plays out is going to be very different. So th I think they'll always be at conflict, at least intellectually, but I think they're learning slowly to respect each other. It was a it was a surprise. It her name is Garnet. Well, the character it's Garnet, correct? Yes. Where she surprises him and says, um, "Hmm, I want you as my uh, effectively for Star Trek terms, it would be my number one." But I guess he's second in command, right? Yeah. Really throws him. That was good. From a, an adult, a real world perspective, if you really want to be challenged, you can't have a lackey, right? Yeah, and I think Garnet you know, she, she fights her own inner demons. She has her own insecurities, but she has enormous emotional intelligence. And you see it in moments like that, where when she makes a mistake, she admits it. And when she sees something is going to be good for the overall, even if she didn't like it personally, she embraces the right choice. And I think that's one of the things that separates her from the other two. And I think it's the thing that her, admirers admire most about her yeah. there's a lot to like these characters feel real i have to tell you dean when the right now as we were talking about her character uh ryan who was on with us gets to have you know i guess his fantasy is I, you can't have a relationship <laughs> with the the boss and it was so funny because in the last week i said something to ryan it's wait a minute which boss which boss are we talking about because we're gonna have the real boss next week <laughs> So it was, it was it was kind of funny, Dean. I have to tell you, sir. We were trying to kind of, trying to punk you a little bit. We were hoping that uh, Ryan he had something else to do. I think he did like the idea, <laughs> but we were going to have him show up like ten minutes in the episode and say, "Hey guys, I'm here for my ep." Uh oh. <laughs> we wanted him to do that by saying, "What is he doing here?" <laughs> but uh, we're like, "No, we can't put him up to that." I so wanted him to do that. Just it to see what awesome. the dynamic would be. <laughs> but uh, he had plans. He did have plans. <laughs> and, he, and, he wrote, and he wrote me and said, you know, sorry, I can't come, but I'd already committed to other things. To and he did. And it he was did. my stupid idea, but I wanted to do that. I thought it would have been <laughs> kind of fun to have him show up and say, I'm ready to be in it. Wait a minute. What's, what's up? What's going on? <laughs> but uh, no, would have been it, it didn't come to pass. Uh, it it, it would have been. I, I think it would have been fun, but I already blew it. The Felix character in the arc is one of my faves. Yeah, you did surprise me on that one. I like that guy. He is his ethos, I guess, or his his what? It's good. He's tough, and he has a moral compass. It's yeah. good stuff. Yeah, and he's the only one on the ship who didn't want to be on the ship. Right. So that's it. That really separates everybody else fought to be on the ship. They, they were desperate to be on the ship. Did anything to be on the ship. He's the only one there who didn't want to be there. And yet he is he is the rock of the entire ship. Um, yeah. Pavla, who plays the part, he, he actually was um, he was on uh, the outpost. And we so fell in love with him as an actor working with on the apples as soon as we started working on this it was like all right wh where do we put him what's his character and uh and he was essential in helping us build this character and uh, I, I think he's he's popping as one of the best characters on the show uh maureen thank you for your comment i love how you get focused to very strong women in all of your projects e baird sophie kai and garnett your characters are real they've been as far back as i can remember folks Strong women exist in the real world. Hollywood is still, it's changing, right, Dean? Yeah, and listen, I'll even, I'll even admit to you that, that my developing the female characters has evolved over the years. You know, I mean, I, I'm kind of really grateful for the Me Too movement because it, it shone a light where, as a male, I didn't really understand it. And now the, you know, more and more and more, I look back at characters I wrote, you know, the beginning of my career. And I think, you know, I, I don't know if I would write that character this way today. And, and now it's much more exciting writing the women characters and working on the women characters. Um, I would say, I would say we started getting a lot better at it with, with uh, leverage. And uh, uh, since then, 
you know, uh, the women characters are, you know, I think they're, they're challenging to write, they're exciting to write. And then we find these amazing actors to play these parts. And, you know, it, and then they add so much themselves as, uh, as creative people. So uh, I'm super happy you like our female characters. Uh, and I want to keep getting better at that. Thank you. Yeah, I like them. The characters are real, as I mentioned earlier. Harry says, okay, let me put my two cents in. You're asking the creator, the dad, which one of his children. Okay. So does Dean have a personal favorite art character? And Dean, answer this, if you would, through episode six. Okay. So what I would tell you is, as far as actors, I love all my children equally. Oh. <laughs> as good. far as characters though to work on i think my my favorite is alicia um i love a character that has diarrhea of the mouth <laughs> and, and really says everything that pops into their brain before the filter can say wait maybe i shouldn't say that so that i i love her character for that reason see i would have thought you would have said your favorite character is the arc <laughs> Oh, well, the arc definitely is a character on the show, without a doubt. Is there anything in the arc that, okay, no, uh, as an A R K, does that signify anything, or is it just oh, there's tight oh, there's a tiny smile there? Is there? Well, I think when when people discover the the hidden DNA lab, uh, the, the hidden DNA library, they start oh, to understand God. why these ships were called Ark. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, Michael and I have been talking. I guess it's going to get hardcore right now, so you're going to have to shut us up, Dean. Okay, but we have some comments. Tiffany Weiss says, and she's talking about the community, people seem, seem to think that there are more clones of her. We've seen two already through five episodes. Haven't seen episode six. Is there uh, any comments, Mr. Devlin, that you would like to give on that? <laughs> um, there are no more clones of her on the arc. <laughs> all right that is awesome folks usually they will not even tell us anything so we got something to work with i like that so aisha says okay let me try again who came up with the overall idea oh aisha actually we did get a bit of this earlier right before you were in but mr dean if you would uh, well it was well, dean's creation he'll say well but yeah. i but I, I will say the the overall idea actually came from a man named michael wright who's listed as one of our executive producers. Mm -hmm. Michael Wright was the head of TNT when I originally did Leverage and Librarians. And he and I were talking one day, and it was actually he who said that he loved a spaceship show because it was a pressure cooker of characters. And he loved the idea of being stuck on a spaceship with, with characters. And it was from that conversation that I went off and I wrote the, the pilot. So I have to give Michael Wright a lot of the credit for the overarching idea of the arc. Wow. I like that. Um, I These are these are the comments coming in. Dad, <laughs> Devlin, LOL. And so I have to tell you something on that. Please. So I have to tell you something. So in the beginning of my career, on you know, someone mentioned Universal Soldier and Stargate. Mm -hmm. They used to always call me the kid. On, on set, they would say, where's the kid? I was like the kid producer, right? And then as time went on and I started doing shows like Leverage and Librarians uh, and, and, and um, Bad Samaritan, suddenly I became the dad. I was the dad on the set, you know? And, and people looked to me like I was the dad. The arc was the first time, because I think the cast is so young, where suddenly I was grandpa. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say, yeah. Tell us a story about the old days. <laughs> wow. so that, was, that, was, that was a transition for me. <laughs> okay. Were there any moments where some of your prior stuff came up in conversation and your kids, the real ones, you know, in the series, had glassy eyes, like they hadn't seen it? I'm sure there is, right? They Pretty much seen... all of it. Oh! <laughs> Yeah, oh, sorry, sir. You are the grandpa. <laughs> Before we started shooting in Serbia, there was a big Serbian film festival, and they decided to give me a Lifetime Achievement Award at the festival, which was very, very sweet. Um, and in honor of this award, they decided they were going to do a screening of Stargate and put up the original print 
the Serbian print, you know, that had the, oh. the, 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 the uh, it had a Serbian uh, uh, dialogue yeah. With, yeah. with subtitles. And, uh, oh, sorry about that, guys. Not at all. We're probably, uh, we're probably going to get it over here, too. How do I turn that off? It's right, folks. That's a real, that's real, folks, okay. here in the United States. We do apologize. Um, Dean, I'm sorry. So, sorry I mean, so, so, they, so they screened the movie with this original print, but because it was a film print and it had been played so many times, it was all like torn up and ratty oh. and the color had faded. It looked like a Charlie Chaplin movie. I, I, I've i never felt so old in my entire life. Although in a weird way, I kind of loved it because it was film. Yeah, yeah, that is cool. Um, going back to the whole, the, the, the tease you may have given us from Garnett, uh, Michael and I were talking about that since we had the ending of episode five, and I hope everyone has seen it, at the very ending where we find that secret room, Michael, because we're talking about this, said, well, maybe there are no other ships. And that's why he's on that one. So I don't know, folks, I apologize. They got you. Dean and I are in Southern California. <laughs> uh, yeah, that that's obvious. So something is going on. I apologize. That's what we were thinking. So I guess we're wrong on that then. Yeah, we're wrong. That is close. <laughs> I have to tell you, one of my favorite things in the universe is live tweeting the show when it's on. And I try to do it whenever I'm available. Um, and I usually do it with the East Coast feed. Um, but it's always so much fun hearing how what people are guessing about what's happening or where it's going. And sometimes they're dead right. And they're way ahead of this the show. And then I wow. like, panic. And other times they couldn't be more wrong. And sometimes, and this, this happened a lot on Leverage, actually, they'll come up with an idea that I'll go, ooh. That New episode. Season, season two. That's a great idea. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That that is cool. What is awesome is that you're paying attention to the comments and it can affect folks. There it is. Live tweeting. They are, and when I say they. The creator is reading and is paying attention. That is cool. I, I do want to give a shameless uh, shout out. Ryan looks like he may join us again Obviously. for the season finale because we are going to do a review. And folks, starting this Sunday, it's probably going to be late. I don't even think Michael has announced it yet. We're going to be doing mm -hmm. an ARC review every Sunday. I know the program is on on a different schedule, but it's us. We're going to be talking about the episode on Sunday. So if you wish to join us on this network, come on in. We're going to be talking about this week's episode, and we're going to go all the way through. And we're going to follow it through all the way through to the season finale. We don't know if Ryan will be able to attend. He wants to, but the young man is busy. So we shall see. I do want to give a shout out to everyone that we are going to be following uh, weekly stuff. So uh, I, enough about us. Uh, Sarah says... Uh, Charlie Chaplin, shout out. Yep. And just right before that, Grandpa, we're the same age. We aren't old. <laughs> uh, it looks like we do have some bad weather coming over to Southern California. So uh, Sarah says, I tweet with you, Dean. So fun. And I'm so grateful. Thank you. Uh, Parker, the ideas. Elizabeth, yeah, old. <laughs> I love when you tweet during the show. Uh, the after show chats are just as important. Of course, kidding and film and fandom says interacting with your fans is what makes you my favorite director team. Oh, thank yeah. you, Kaylee. Kay Kaylee, by the way, has an awesome show herself. If you haven't seen it, she she, she does a terrific podcast. So I, I highly recommend people check hers out as well. And uh, Dean, thank you for reminding me about that. Uh, films and fandoms with Kaylee. Let us know where you are. I mean, I know I see your YouTube channel there and they can find it. But if you have a web page, Hey, we're all in this together. There's no different. Uh, their program's probably better than ours, but that's neither here nor there. But <laughs> we're all in this together. If you want to put your website in there, uh, I'll put it on screen. Go ahead, Kaylee, and everyone and anyone else, too. We're the lucky ones to be able to have a conversation with Dean right now. Well, by the way, by the way while we're doing plugs, um, we also oh, have a, a, a podcast that's actually created in the room that I'm in right now called After the Arc, and it comes out every Thursday and it has behind the scenes information and, and interviews with all the cast and crew. So if you're, if, if, uh, if you, if you need a little bit more after each episode, 
please check that out as well. Okay, so it's after the arc. After the arc is, and we can find it through on Electric the, Now. Electric Now, there it is. And folks, there it is. It so we can go through electricentertainment.com, correct? You can do that, or you can go directly to electricnow.tv. I'm writing that. Download Michael. the app on any of your smart devices. Electricnow.tv. I'm going to post that, and is that the correct one right there? That's it. Electric. Oh, no, that's electronic. It should be electric. Oh, uh, I got it wrong. Ignore that, folks. Electric. And I don't even have autocorrect. <laughs> I just blew that one. Electricnow.tv. I think this one's going to be it, folks. That's from fast so, typing. Um, yeah. There you go. Wow. See? So um, I'm going to have to listen in because I'm hooked on this. Uh, You'll get a kick out of it. It's a fun show. All right. It might so, inspire some of your own questions on yours. Uh, yeah. Oh, all right. I like that. So is there a set time that it's on? So it plays on the live channel. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, on Thursdays, uh, but it's also available on demand on the app. And I think even the Sci-Fi Channel app has it on it as well. Oh, I like that. Uh, Quarter Cat? Yeah, that's right, man. I'm all... <laughs> yes, nothing like a guest calling you out live for an error. Folks, I got called out by Walter Koenig on air for a weather question. And I find <laughs> it amusing that it's, uh, it's raining right now. But that's neither here nor there. Yeah, look, there it is. Thank you so much, Dean. You're welcome. <laughs> so it's good. Michael, come on, jump on in, pal. Folks, oh, I, was, I was just please. fixing I was just fixing the the banner, so oh, all right. So Appreciate I it. It's gonna be so right now, now, I gotta, now I gotta think what I was saying. Um I, I don't know we, I think we've kind of said it, but this kind of shocked me too. It's where you film the arc. It's Serbia, right? That's right. Belgrade, I mean, Serbia. I oh, was wow. I was surprised. I was like Serbia. <laughs> was there a particular reason you chose Serbia, or did they just have studios that were available, or was it a combination of things? Well, we had done the outpost in Serbia. So oh, I didn't realize kind of, that. Yeah, okay. that's where we kind of fell in love with Serbia. Um, you know, I mean, look, we we don't have a lot of money to make this show, and I wanted to make it as big as I possibly could, and 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 our dollar stretches a long way in Serbia. But there's another big advantage of, of working there in that, you know, in the United States, when you want to have an international cast, for the most part, you're casting Americans with doing fake accents. Mm. But being in Serbia, we literally have actors from Spain, from Germany, from uh, England, from France. You know, we, we have actors from all across Europe. And so it really allowed us to have a, a, an international cast in a way that we could not afford to do in the United States. Yeah. That that is that is a big thing. I I did not realize that the outpost was filmed in Serbia also, but that makes sense then. Yeah, I hope you do get season five of that. Well, wait a minute, me Which, too. Oh. We have great ideas for it. Ooh, good, good. Uh, folks, uh, I need a I need a quick moment. Uh, the real world is interrupting me. I have to take care. I'll be right back in about a minute. Forgive me a moment. Okay, take it easy. Um, let's see, I'm trying to think if there I was, think it's the IRS. I think it is. I really do. Let me see if I can. Oh, that's right. Um, so uh, let's talk a little bit about, um, the outpost because I really enjoyed it. It was, I got way behind on it, but I had recorded it and I was so glad I had, I was like three seasons behind when it ended. <laughs> And well, the last two seasons were shot back to back during the pandemic. That so explains it. Yeah, it was wild to do uh, 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 26 episodes all during the pandemic. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't even imagine that because it's other people that we've talked to that filmed during the pandemic. It was just like uh. way, way, way too many. Way, way too many uh, problems and and more expenses, I'm sure, because of all all protocols, especially That's in the right. United States, there was. Um, yeah, well, we, at that time, this was before the protocols came out. So we were we were basically inventing the protocols at that time. 
Oh, really? Oh, yeah. And and in fact, ours ended up being more restrictive than what ended up coming out later. Oh, yeah, because we couldn't take the chance. We couldn't, you know, we, and we had to convince people to come to work when it was very scary to come to work. Yeah. Yeah, I I remember that when it really genuinely was scary. And we didn't know what was going on. That was yeah. a hard time, sir. That was so. So the back to back seasons because of the pandemic, did you have to make script changes or were you able to film it the way that you had planned it? Or did you have to make some? We didn't do any script changes, but we, we changed the way we shot. You know, we didn't do longer than 10 hour days. We, um, when there were big extra scenes, we would do photo replication instead of bringing out more extras. So there was a lot of little cheats we had to do, but uh, script wise, we kept we we stayed with our ambition. Uh, sorry, your phone rang, Michael. Michael, we're trying to reach you about your car's warranty. That was funny, Elizabeth. But you know <laughs> what is funny is someone texted me uh, three hours ago about the same thing. That's funny, <laughs> folks. I apologize. I did get a phone call. Um, I set up an appointment for twelve, and I'm like, we got Dean Devlin. No, you're going back to one. So my client called me at 12 and I'm like, no, no, I'm busy. So <laughs> it, I, I apologize. I had to handle that one, but this is funny stuff while we're getting the comments in the chat room. Uh, Tiffany says, I get their stuff. Yes, it does. Uh, I make music reels with pics. Uh, this is part of the conversation in here. This goes back to Maureen asking, what future plans do you have for the Electric Now app? Well, you know, we're, we, we continue to grow it as, as, uh, as we can. Uh, uh, we, we try to put our shows on it as they become available when the contracts allow us to. Uh, we're producing more original content for the app. Um, and for those of you, I don't know if, if you saw, but this year's Saturn Awards, which was the 50th anniversary, we actually broadcast it live on the app. And oh. uh, a, a new cut down version is going to be up on the app very soon. And, and we're going to do the Saturn Awards again this year. And we're going to try and do some more live events from uh, the different conventions uh, uh, around the country. So, yeah, we're always trying to grow it, grow our audience, uh, create new content for it. So, uh, yeah, uh, um, stay tuned. <laughs> uh, going back to the ark, it didn't dawn on me. This is a darn good question. Are we going to see some real animals on the ark? And I believe she's talking about like farm animals oh, so <laughs> I, I, dog I, stuff. I, I thought i thought she was talking about bryce <laughs> oh right yeah it was... oh, could be yeah yeah that was, that was good we're on the same page for once that was good uh, you, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to hang in there you, you might be surprised on on the answer to that question oh oh okay oh that's interesting yeah. um yeah potty break you're funny tiffany no was that <laughs> Uh, congratulations on another year of Saturn Awards. Thank you, Susie. That's good stuff. Uh, yeah, they're not going to let that one go now. Sorry. <laughs> Way to push things back for Dean. <laughs> <laughs> that is cool. I know I'm going to be downloading the apps myself. It's my fault that I don't have them, but uh, there it well, is. You'll get a kick out of it. Now. One of the things that's very fun on the app that you might have fun with uh, is that there's a section called Classic Cartoons and Classic TV. And it has like Betty Boop cartoons oh. and Casper and uh, uh, some real old ones. And then in the television, it even has the old Milton Berle show, which if, if, if anyone out there has never seen the Milton Berle show, you should go on the app and watch it. He, he was David Letterman many, many, many years before David Letterman. It's really interesting. Yeah. I'm trying to download the app right now. Yeah, I uh, can imagine this like, that that yeah, Milton Berle. I'm, I mean, I'm sure most of the cast that you had for the Ark, they don't know, had no idea, no clue. <laughs> Guys, I I pulled up a, a guitar during the shooting of uh, of the pilot, and I I played a Beatles song, and no, none of them had ever heard that Beatles song before. I was stunned. Which, which, and some of them are from England. <laughs> which one did you play? Do you just if you remember? Played, uh, uh, Norwegian Wood. Not one of the more popular ones, but yeah, that's might be why, but <laughs> but still it's a Beatles song. Uh folks, I appreciate the conversation going on. They're they're going back and forth in the in the chat room, which is really cool. For those that they're the uh, best fans us, in the world. Oh hell yeah. Oh Roz! Uh, <laughs> and there it is, one of ours. <laughs> 
Milton Burrow was funny as heck. I don't think anyone else in the chat room probably knows who that is. So that's all right. I uh, had, I had, I knew who Milton Burrow was, and I had met him actually once. It was a oh, wow. uh, that's another great story. But I had not, never actually watched the show until I had the app, and I was just blown away. The, he did a Broadway play, a Broadway a variety show every single week. I mean, yeah. it was tremendous. That's what a lot of them did back in the early days of TV. They, I mean, they had a, I mean, it was, I mean, I remember when I was little, I'm older than you, Dean. So I, I remember <laughs> some. <laughs> uh, Elizabeth says, Dean, I'm sure that she meant to write, please stop. You're making her feel old. Uh, of course. I'll tell you my Milton Berle story. Please. So this is back in the eighties when I was an actor. And I was on a TV series called um, Hard Copy. And in the early 80s, the place to be was the improv in Los Angeles. Everybody wanted to be at the improv. And I used to go two, three times a week. And I had a very small table in the corner that, that was always kind of my table. We, other young actors would sit with me. But the main table, which was Bud Friedman, who owned the, 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 the improv, his table was the desired table. And on one particular night at that table, it was Robin Williams, Robert De Niro, um, Christopher Reeves, um, uh, and Milton Berle and his wife, and Bud Friedman. And wow. in the middle of their dinner, Milton Berle's wife points at me and goes, isn't that that kid from the show that we watch? And Milton Berle goes, oh my God. And he gets up and he walks over and he sits at my table. And he starts talking with me. Now, the, everybody at the improv is turning and looking at my table like, what's going on? Oh, he got oh. censored. <laughs> Sorry. There he is. <laughs> it actually might be lightning. Is it raining over by you, Dean? Yeah, it is. So, actually. So anyway, yeah. we talk. At the end, he says, would you like my card? I said, sure. So he opens up a deck of cards, and he pulls out the Joker, and he hands it to me. And him doing that at the improv was kind of like knighting me. Because from then on, I was invited to sit at the big table. Really? <laughs> it, was all from, it was all from Milton Berle. That's my Milton Berle story. <laughs> wow. Okay. Dean, sitting at that table, did you ever think that you would be there? I know it's a juvenile question, but the names you just mentioned, wow. It was, it was tremendous. It was tremendous. I, well, I'll, since Robin Williams was at that table, I will tell you my Robin Williams story. Please. So this goes back to 1980 when I was Al Pacino's chauffeur. That was my job. I was his chauffeur in 1980. Mm. And one night, most of the same people who were at that table were in the car with Al Pacino. It was two in the morning and we were going to a comedy club that, that was staying open late for a special private show of Robin Williams. So we pull up, they get out of the car, they go inside, and I'm sitting in the car feeling pretty depressed that I'm missing this amazing show that's going on inside. So I'm sitting there a little bit depressed and all of a sudden there's a knock on the window and I turn and I look and it's Robin Williams. And I roll down the window and he's holding a ticket. And he said, here, you gotta come inside. The ticket, was front row center. So I go in, I sit down, I can't believe it. I sit down front row center. Robin Williams comes out on stage and improvs for 20 minutes what it must be like to be Al Pacino's chauffeur. And it's hilarious. Now he's only been in the car for 10 minutes and yet he in his mind has created an entire act on how weird it must be to be Al Pacino's chauffeur. And it was hilarious. That's my Robin Williams story. <laughs> I had not heard that one. And I, I thank you for that. Wow, that is absolutely awesome. <laughs> uh, right now, Maureen is asking, which I would say, hmm, I don't know. Because everyone has to know that you're in Independence Day when he says, I'm on it. And that's when <laughs> you're about to fire the missile. And of course, he can. Well, just my voice. Just right, my right. Voice. Excuse me. Yes. Just your voice. Yes. So, folks, you know, I, I saw the behind the scenes stuff. So, <laughs> so are you going to cast yourself? A, my voice is in a lot of the things I have done, 
but uh, I don't think I would ever cast myself. I, I, I'm not a good enough actor. But uh, but in, but in the looping state, by the way, on, on season one of Almost Paradise, for those of you who've watched it, um, so season one, again, we finished shooting. Literally, the last day of shooting was when the lockdown happened. Oh. So we had to post it completely during lockdown. And I was doing a lot of the posting from my house. And we couldn't get actors or the loop group to come in and do looping. So if you watch Almost Paradise again, almost every background voice you hear, every cop, every doctor, it's me <laughs> doing my very terrible Filipino accent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you realize that everyone's going to go back and listen into that now. <laughs> well done. Hey, that's what you got to do. Got to get those uh, views up, right? Uh, Jill Goldstein says, hey, guys, sorry. Dean has another appointment. Need to wrap up. Uh, Jill, that should have been in the private chat. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> but it is. Yeah. You know what? We have gone over um, and I do apologize. But good job, Jill. Thank you. You know, I'm <laughs> not going to let that one go right now. But uh, that is funny. Uh, folks, uh, I, I know we've gone over and I do apologize, Dean. I want to thank you for that. No worries. Um, Nice job, Jill, but I'm not going to let it go. That was funny. We got caught up ourselves. I, you know, I wasn't even watching the clock, and I I apologize for that, uh, Mr. No Devlin, worries. But it was good I stuff. always enjoy talking with you guys. Oh, it's absolutely a lot of fun. So, Dean, um, we really didn't get a chance to hit the other ones. You did mention Almost Paradise and Leverage Redemption. So we did get some stuff in there. Any particular thing that we want to get word out to the audience and to your fans? I think the number one thing at the moment is if you like the arc, tell your friends. That's what I've been doing. Yes, I am. And we do want to say that someone gave us a like to this episode that did not like the arc. Interesting. So they're here. So <laughs> there it is. Uh, Marsha says, add Jill goes, great going on keeping things straight. I'll take it aside. <laughs> Folks. Check out his stuff. Go over to IMDb. It helps to click on the IMDb page. It helps out Dean. Not that he needs it, but it's a good thing. Go ahead and go to Facebook, YouTube. Click on all the likes. If you want to see another second season of The Ark, I know we're jumping ahead, but is that the best thing that we could do, Dean? Or how do we do it to get a second season? The best thing is, is to be part of the community, to, to help spread the word. Uh, you know, I, again, as I said earlier, my work is not for everybody, but the people who like it tend to really like it. And wow. most people haven't even heard about it. So if, if, if you've got a friend, turn them on to it. If you know someone who, who tuned out on the pilot, tell them to try a couple more episodes. It may turn them around. Yeah. I'm glad that we had a chance to talk about the other episodes as well. So Dean, I thank you once again. I thank you for giving time to us because we are your fans. Keep it going, man. We love watching what you do. It's exciting. It's fun. Love the sense of humor. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise, but you know that already. Well, thank you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, we no, do that. Away. Yeah. Thank you. There we go. That thank you. are good, there man. Go. <laughs> so uh, we're doing our own bit of acting right now because when I look that way, I'm facing north. When you looked at me, Dean, which direction were you facing? I'm facing, I'm facing south. Ah, so he's looking that way and I'm looking this way, but the way it works. So again, it's all good. Just very quickly. Here you go. Here are all the other comments. Watch the episode. Let's get season five. I miss you, Robin Williams. Yes, we all do. Thank you for your time, Dean. We love you. And thank you, XX. And thank you, Harvey the Todd of Wrath. So Dean, thank you. We're going to continue for a few moments. So if you want to just go ahead and go off right now, we're going to close up shop right here. I appreciate it. Take care, y'all. Thanks, Thanks young man. Keep it up. Bye -bye. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, absolutely awesome right here. Um, not surprised. I'm sorry, Jill, that we lost track. <laughs> so thank you for keeping us on track and a lot of fun. Folks, if you ever want to join us, you ever want to do a program, come on in. Uh, we're still learning how to use this program as well. That's why we try to go to all the comments. Next time, we're going to try to work it where we can have the guests actually join us. But we've already been punked. And we've already had some moments. So we're very careful on doing that. But the more often that you show up with us, we would be able to. If the guests would like to have what we used to call callers before, we could actually have you join us. So we're going to be doing this again. Stay tuned. 
Uh, we have a tentative agreement that Ryan is going to be joining us for the final episode, which would be a lot of fun. But check out everything. There's the website. Go to Electric Entertainment. It's right there. You all know that. Electricentertainment.com. The app is electricnow.tv. Um, thank you. And I thank everyone that came in to share your comments. I try to get to all of them. If I didn't get to each and every one of you, that's just the old man. Forgive me. But we were reading them. And thanks, folks. We're going to be on again. And uh, head on over to ndbmedia.net. That's our shameless plug. Yeah, Bye. our shameless plug. And we do have Saul Rubinek from Warehouse 13 on Monday oh, night. Oh, damn it. I forgot yep. to mention that. Yep. Yes. And at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, 6 p.m. Pacific on the NDB Media Network. And you, you can look at that. Because if, if you're on our YouTube page right now, you can see if you go to the main thing, it'll say upcoming and you can press the little button and say, you know, remind me about it if you'd like to come. We'd love to have you. Um, so that's that's my little plug. We're working on a few more guests, but uh, we haven't had it confirmed yet. So as I said, we're working on it. And if you want to come to the new Sunday night reviewing of, we're going to be reviewing the ARC. Um, what else are we going? We did oh Star Trek Picard. We'll also and, talk about uh, the Mandalorian and the Mandalorian. So that sounds good. Oh, here we go. I have an episode of my podcast tonight at nine thirty Eastern Time. Hey, look, folks. For those of you that have other programs, we're fortunate. We do have quite a few guests. It's not blowing our own horn or whatever. But if you want to join us, contact us. All right. I'm leaving it out there. So I want to thank Michael. He's the one that's arranging all of this and he's making it happen. So look, hey, Keely, you're already getting some confirmations. Uh, Elizabeth Cooper says uh, that and Tiffany says that and excited to see you there. So a lot of fun. Looking forward to seeing you guys. And thanks for spending your Friday afternoon with us. Michael, thank you. This was fun. I spoke to Dean. 10 years ago that was a fun interview and uh i thank you for being able to arrange it again it's cool yeah all yeah. right now i'm gonna Charlene, go back thank to you. the arc is behind me i'm gonna get in my little shuttle and go over there so thank you thank you thank you thank you if you want to subscribe we do appreciate it. we have a lot of stuff folks i actually on our blog talk radio channel i'm gonna put it on screen folks we still have a lot of programming on there as well you can find a lot of our episodes there. It's blogtalkradio.com forward slash NDB Media. We've been on air for 15 years, folks. We're nothing different than everyone else. We are fans. We, we, we're fortunate. It's right there. Blogtalkradio.com forward slash NDB Media. You can go back and listen to the Dean Devlin interview. Uh, and there's a lot of stuff right there. So... Yeah, we've been doing a lot of stuff for 15 years. I'm old. Are you? Yeah, sadly, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are. Thanks, folks. You want to join us? Interested in doing a program? Let us know. All right. Michael, you want to go ahead and take us away? Because we'll see you guys on the other side. For me, work calls. It's noon. Oh, by the way, for those of you that were wondering, that alert of all things was a false it was a false one. Um, they, they had to pull it back. It was an endangered missing advisory cancel. But interesting how Dean's went off first and then mine went off about five minutes after that. Had nothing to do with weather. It was an amber alert. So, all right. Okay. Everyone, thanks again for coming. And we hope to see you Monday. And then we're on a, all our other shows. So... Hang Thanks, Jill. <laughs> yeah, she's not going to talk to me after that one. So no, it's, all it's all good. All right, we'll see you guys. We're out of here. Peace always.